Merry Christmas. And don't forget Mary had Christmas. The Savior named Jesus, not some old fat saint called Nick. Hey, this is Pastor Marvin Booth. And uh, here it is as we're approaching the season where we celebrate the miraculous nativity, the birth of Jesus Christ, born of a virgin in Bethlehem's manger where he was laid. From the crib to the cross, he said, for this reason, for this purpose, was I born that I might die, according to John 18, verse 37. And uh, out here in the harvested cotton fields where I live in uh, southeast Georgia, and just hearing a word from the Lord this morning and um, about the return of Christ. You know, Jesus came. He came, he prepared himself a body, Hebrews 10, verses 5. Jesus, the Son of God, placed himself in a virgin womb through the person and power of the Holy Ghost. Before Joseph and Mary came together, that means sexually, according to Matthew chapter 1, verses 20, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost, and that which was conceived in her was of the Holy Ghost. So Jesus was virgin conceived, virgin born. He is the Messiah. He's the sent one. He came. Now, some would debate over, you know, the actual month or the date, quote unquote, when Jesus was born. Many say it's in the spring of the year. Many want to say it's April, May. Many want to say it's not December. It was not December the 25th. It was not this or not that. But listen, the Christmas message is not that we worship the date. We worship him, not the calendar. No, we don't worship the calendar. We worship Christ. So most likely he probably weren't born on no December the 25th. I know that's traditionally uh, the time that it's been, you know, called for as Christmas or Christmas as many would call it. Uh, but look, in Matthew chapter 2, this would have been two years after Jesus was born. He's now no longer just a little infant in a manger. He's actually a young toddler. King Herod's wanting to kill him. He's wanting to assassinate him. He's wanting to destroy Jesus because he's heard of the prophecy from so long ago that a king would be born in Bethlehem. And he don't know who it is, where it is, you know, or he knows where it is, but he don't know who it is. And, and he wants to waste Jesus. He don't really want to worship Jesus. And in Matthew 2, verses 2, it said, The Magi, that is the wise men who came from the east, traveled a long way following the star. It said they came to worship him in Matthew 2, verses 2. Because they were saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? Because we have come to worship him. All right. Well, when Herod found this out, he began to inquire of them privately in Matthew 2, verses 7. And he said, what time was he born? In other words, what was the date he was born? This is the difference between wise worshipers and wicked worldly folk. Wise worshipers are not asking, when was he born? What's the date? What's the time? No, they're asking, where is he? We want to worship him. So they're not concerned about dates and times and, and seasons and calendars. You know, 1 Timothy 1 verses 4 says, don't give heed to in endless genealogies. That's talking about timetables and dates, you know, and fables, make-believe stories, you know, don't give heed to those because they increase unto more ungodliness and they do not exhort the faith. They do not declare the faith that is in Christ. So God says, don't give heed to those endless genealogies about the calendar and the fables, the make-believe, the fantasies, uh, because, you know, they don't edify to godliness, which is in the faith. So uh, the Bible warns about that. And so here we find the Magi, the wise men, we don't know how many they are. The Bible don't tell us. Uh, but they came from a long distance. Most likely took them two years to travel that distance. And uh, But the time they get to where Jesus is, Matthew 2, verses 11 says he's in a house. 
he's a young toddler, and they come to worship him. Ain't that amazing? They came to worship him at his house. Oh, glory to God. A lot of people say they're worshiping Christ at Christmas, but they don't have time for his house. Anyhow, I'm not going to get off on that too long. And that's where they opened their treasures to him and presented unto him gifts of gold, frankincense, and mirth. Again, that's in Matthew 2, verses 11. But back up to old King Herod that represents the spirit of the world that is wicked because Herod was wicked. He wanted to murder the Messiah. He wanted to kill the king of kings. He didn't want to really worship Jesus, though in Matthew 2 and 8, he told the Magi, when you find him, come report back to me because I want to come and worship him like y'all have come to do. But Herod didn't want to worship Jesus. He wanted to waste Jesus. And friend, likewise, those who are debating over dates, when he came the first time, when he was born, when he's coming again, when the date will be, all those that are trying to predict the date of his next coming are out of order biblically, according to Matthew 24, 27, you know, because not even the angels, Jesus said, only my father knows when that hour will be. And, uh, and we'll get into that in just a few moments. But we hear the word of the Lord today that the very nature that is wicked, the spirit of Herod, is still asking, what time? What time? What's the date? What's the date? And it says it, can't, it wants to worship Jesus, but it really don't. It wants to waste Jesus. But the real true worshipers, the Magi, Praise God. All they were concerned about is where is he at? We've come to worship him. So they weren't there to worship a time or a date or a calendar. They were there to worship Christ. They were there for a date with Jesus. They weren't there about a so-called date that Jesus came. And friend, we don't know the time, really, when he came the first time, born of a virgin. All we know is he came. Yeah, he did. And he died on that cross at the age of 33. And three days after they crucified him, he raised himself from the dead. And God hath raised him from the dead. Acts 13, verses 30. So you better watch out. You better not doubt. You better not lie. I'm telling you why. Because Jesus Christ is coming again in the sky. I'm telling you. Behold, he's coming in the clouds and every eye is going to see him. Revelation 1, verses 7. We don't know the date of his second coming, his, his next appearing. Acts 1 and 11 says, You men of Galilee, why stand ye here gazing up into the heavens? But this same Jesus that's been taken away from us shall come again in like manner. He's coming again. I don't know the date. I don't know the hour. The Bible's very clear in Matthew chapter 24, verses 40 through 42. The Bible says, Two shall be in the field. One shall be taken and the other shall be left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. One shall be taken and the other left. Verse 42 of Matthew 24 says, Watch ye therefore, for you know not what hour the Son of Man comes. So that's proof right there. Jesus said, you're not going to know the hour, but you got to be ready. By verse 44 of Matthew 24, he goes on to say, Be ye also ready, for in an hour you think not. So Jesus says, if there is a date or an hour, it'll be in an hour that many people are living like in the days of Noah and Lot, thinking that it's just going to continue as it always has continued. Marrying, giving in marriage, drinking, partying, buying and selling. Life going on as normal, but people not having time for God. People too busy for God and his ways and his house and his kingdom. Too, too busy for God. Life's become their God. They're lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of God, 2 Timothy 4. In verses 2 declares, so he said it be in that hour, an hour that we think not. Friend, we're living in that hour, in an hour that many are not even thinking about the return of Christ. How in the world can you approach in the spirit of Christmas, who is the Holy Ghost, the celebration of his birth when he came the first time, and not have on the top of your heart that he could come again? Wouldn't that be something Jesus could come before December 25th, 2023? I'm not saying he is because I don't know. Nobody knows this. Nobody knows. Hallelujah. But all I know is we're living in an hour where many are not thinking about it. And that is proof. It is at the door. It is at hand. He came once. We don't know the time. 
We don't know the date, but we don't worship the time and the dates. We don't worship the calendar. We're not like that spirit of King Herod, that old wicked worldliness. We're not debating over dates. We don't care what time he came. All we care about is he came, and we're going to worship him on December 25th. We're going to worship him January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September. Come on, somebody, October, November, and again on December. We're going to worship him around the clock and throughout every calendar, amen, of every year. Why? Because he's the son of the living God, and he could come today. Friend, that's the reality of it. He came once. He will come again. So those that are debating about the dates of when he came the first time, saying that's why they don't celebrate Christmas. And those that are debating, trying to predict the date of his second coming, they're all operating in the spirit of error, the spirit of Herod, the spirit of wickedness. Do you understand me? We don't care about the genealogies. We don't care about the calendars and the dates and the seasons. We're not worshiping seasons. We're worshiping the Savior. Hear the Holy Ghost. So whether it's December the 25th, or whether it's July the 25th. Who cares? Hallelujah. All we care about is like the Magi. Where is he at? We want to worship him. We're not like King Herod. What time was he born? What time? What time? Those that's always fussing and feuding over the time he came the first time and the time he's coming back again. Friend, all that is darkness. That is demonic distractions. He came and he's coming again. And just like Matthew 24, verse 40 through 42, one's going to be in the field, or two's going to be in the field. One will be taking the other left. That's verses 40 of Matthew 24. As I looked out my window early this morning, and I saw where these farmers had recently reaped all this cotton. See all them big, big cotton bales out there all across the field? A lot of money wrapped up in that. And uh, they'll carry that to, you know, the places they carry them to. And uh, some of us will be wearing that, buying stuff at Walmart, you know, or clothing, cotton, and different things they make. But look on the ground right here. I want you to look on the ground. Look at all the cotton. Look at all the cotton that's been left behind. I want you to see this. Look at all that cotton. Look at all that cotton. It ain't in those bells over there. It fell. It didn't get reaped. It didn't get pulled up into the harvester and bailed. It fell down and got left behind. Look at all that cotton. Friend, that's the way it's going to be when Jesus comes. Some's going to be taken. And others are going to be left. Well, you better get right or you're going to get left. Jesus is coming. That's the Christmas gospel. He came. He's coming again. If you have fell away from him, if you've fallen into snares of sin, get back up and come back to him. Though your sins be red as scarlet, they can be whiter than snow. Isaiah 1 verse 18. You can have a white Christmas. You can have a white the rest of your life. He can wash your black soul that's stained with sin, whiter than snow through the blood of the Lamb. And if you experience a white Christmas through the red blood of the Lamb, friend, you'll never have a blue Christmas ever again. Are you going to be like the cotton that was harvested when he comes? Is he going to be able to reap you? Or are you going to be like this cotton that's left behind? Two shall be in the field. One shall be taken, and the other shall be left.